The uh, next one is mentioned by Imam Muslim in by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. The hour will not be established until the Euphrates, the Al Furat, the Euphrates River, uncovers a mountain of gold. Out of every hundred, ninety-nine will die, and each one of them will hope that they will be the only survivor. What's interesting is number one, as we speak, the Euphrates River is drying up. The Prophet said this a thousand four hundred years ago, and it's drying up as we speak. So it will continue to dry up until it uncovers this mountain of gold. Now, when this mountain of gold is uncovered, everybody tries to go get that gold. Out of every 199 will die trying to get the gold. But what's sad, the Prophet said, each one of them will hope that they will be the only survivor. Um, one of the scholars said, the fact that they hope that they'll be the only survivor, that means they know that out of 199 die, that means they know this hadith. It's possible, but it's also possible that news traveled that out of each 199 die, meaning a huge numbers are dying trying to get this gold. And they know that news, but they still think, you know what, there's a 1% chance, inshallah, I can make it. I'll be that 1%. Everybody thinks they'll be the 1%. So, why did the Prophet tell us that? Why do we learn the signs of the hour? So that we know how to behave when it happens. If right now, you're watching TV, and you hear that the Euphrates River, a part of it dried up, and it uncovered this mountain of gold, what would you do? You have to act upon what the Prophet said. If you hear, if you hear about it, don't go. Don't say, oh, inshallah, I'll be that 1%. I'll make dua, I'll make dhikr on the way. La, habibi. Don't go. That's what, that's what we were told, so that we act accordingly. That was the Euphrates drying up and uncovering a mountain of gold. Also in Sahih Muslim, this is in Medina, the city of Medina, expelling its resident. So the Prophet ﷺ says, a time will come upon the people when a person will invite his cousin and relative saying, come to prosperity, come to prosperity, and Medina is better for them, if they only knew. By the one in whose hand is my soul, no one will leave, will leave it willingly, except that Allah will replace them with someone better. So the city is just gonna be, people will leave it willingly, and then someone better replaces them. So it's just gonna have the best of people. And then the Prophet said, indeed, Al Medina is like bellows expelling impurity. They use it to, to generate a, like a strong force of winds for blacksmithing and other things. So Medina is like bellows expelling its impurities. And the hour will not be established until Medina expels its evil residents, just as bellows expel the impurities of iron. The bad people leave Medina, good people replace them, and they just get rid of, you know. But the, that's what's going to happen towards the, the end, end of times. Next one, the ruin of Medina. So, is it populated, or is it ruined, or is it abandoned? You have to understand immediately that this will be different time periods. So it's not like we have 50 years left for the end of the world where everything has to happen. There's plenty of time, Allahu A'lam, where things can happen and the world can change. This one in Surah Abu Dawood, Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when Bayt al-Maqdis is taken, Medina will become abandoned. And when Medina is abandoned, there will be a great battle. So now we're seeing Medina populated in one hadith and abandoned in another hadith, different time periods. Now there will be a great battle. And when the great battle occurs, Constantinople will be conquered. And when Istanbul or Constantinople is conquered, al Constantinia is, is uh, what is today Istanbul, when Constantinia is conquered, the Dajjal will appear. Oh, there's so many things to talk about here, right? So we're, having, we're seeing Medina being repopulated because when the Dajjal appears, the safest place is to be in Medina and Mecca. So, but it just said the Medina is abandoned. That means that happens, then it's repopulated again. So, so Istanbul, according to this hadith, Muslims will lose control of it. And then it will be regained again after a great battle, and then the Dajjal will appear. Um, 
there will be two rulers. This is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. This was the first one. They will not be established until a man emerges from Qahtan who will lead the people with his stick. So, so some people said that the fact that he leads with a stick indicates that he's going to be severe. He's not going to be like a, a kind, just ruler. He's going to be severe. That's why he's got a stick. That's one opinion. But, Wallahu alam, the more correct opinion is that is she, he rules with a stick, it shows that, that people will actually accept him and they will uh, follow him as a leader. And they will obey him. So why does he have a stick then? How does a stick show obedience and not that he's harsh? Because they said he's ruling with a stick, not a sword. So he just points with it, just like something you hold like for decoration, you know? Like when, the, when a king holds a scepter, is the scepter for smacking people with? He's just holding it, right? So he rules, he directs them and guides them with his stick. He doesn't need a sword. So that indicates that people are obeying him, they accept him, and that he is illegitimate. And he is from Qahtan. So he, the scholars who argued that he is just and righteous, they use that argument. And then Ibn Abbas عنه, narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said about Qahtan, they're all righteous. So that adds more to the argument that the Qahtani is a righteous man. When will he emerge? Allah Ta'ala A'lam. There are no hints here. But it seems that he's a, a righteous, a salih, a righteous person and not uh, someone who is a tyrant. But then there'll be another ruler. His name is Jahjah. So the nights and days will not pass, meaning the day of judgment will not come until a man from the Mawali, a Mawla is a freed slave. Until a slave will rule, he will be known as Jahjah. Some scholars said Al Jahjah is the same as the man from Qahtan, the one, the first one, the righteous man ruling with the stick. But others said no, that's not possible, because he cannot be a freed slave and be from Qahtan. Qahtan is from the the great tribes and the, from the leading tribes are from amongst the Arabs. Pure. How is that man from Qahtan going to be a slave? That's not possible. This is a, a different man from Al Mawali, and he will be known as Jahjah. So Al Jahjah here is he going to be a good ruler or a bad ruler? Well, they they said in uh, in classical Arabic the meaning of that name is someone constantly shouting, and so they're saying that according to the scholars they're saying that a person who is a, a Jahjah in this case will be someone who is not worthy or someone who has bad character. All right. So that means Al Jahjah is not a good ruler, but someone else, like a, a bad person, uh, coming in the future. Okay, we've got. Uh, this is a narration from Imam Ahmad. The first of the tribes to go into the, to into demise, yani to, to die out, will be Quraysh. And it is almost as if a woman passes by a sandal and says, "This was the sandal of a Qurashi," which could indicate that they might disappear suddenly. And if they start to dwindle over hundreds of years, not like they're going to have remnants left over, but the fact that the woman is saying, oh, this used to belong to a Qurayshi, as if a Qurayshi, and as if he left recently and just left their belongings behind. So it's something, they die of something, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, we don't know. And it's not even for anyone to speculate here. There were not, there's not enough material or hints for anyone to guess and think, oh, it's going to be a genetic this, or it's going to... This is mentioned in Sahih Muslim, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu. He mentioned the Prophet ﷺ said, it will soon be that the people of Iraq cannot receive food nor money. We asked from whom would this be? And he replied, the non-Arabs. He then said, it will soon be that the people of Asham cannot receive food nor money. We asked him from whom would this be? And he replied, the Romans or a Rum, which at that time also meant the Europeans, didn't mean just Romans in, in that sense. He then remained silent for a while, after which he said, Towards the end of my ummah, there will be a leader who will pour out wealth without counting. Now, that, and that's amazing, because it, it has happened and is happening. Could this be referring to the embargo that, that happened to Iraq you know, some years ago? It could very well be, and it could, as the scholars always leave it open, it could be that event, and it could be another one coming as well, wallahu alam. But the point is that we did see this happen. We did see an embargo on Iraq. They were not able to receive food. 
they were not able to receive money, people were not able to deal with them uh, financially and so on in business. And one of the amazing things, I remember this, if you remember, um, Madeleine Albright, who uh, at the time of Clinton, and uh, they were interviewing her, they told her that it is, uh, it is reported or an estimated that 1.5 million babies died in Iraq because of the embargo, because they weren't able to bring medicine into the country, there was this embargo. And I'll never forget that interview with her. She just looked right at the person interviewing her, and she said, that's just the price you have to pay. Anyways, so yes, the embargo, and it was from non-Muslims, and non-Arabs could have meant non-Muslims, because at that point, all the Muslims were Arabs. So at that point, at that time period, if you said non-Arab, it meant non-Muslim. Then it says, soon be that the people of Sham cannot receive food or money. And the Sham, and everybody immediately thinks of Syria. And it, could that be the only interpretation of the Hadith? There could be another one. We, don't, we hope there isn't, but this is happening. No food, no, no money reaching the poor people in Syria or people in the Sham. And we've seen that. And we'll ask, we ask Allah Azza to facilitate their affairs. So then... Uh, and he said this was from the, the Romans being the Europeans. Then the Prophet ﷺ remained silent for a while, after which he said, Towards the end of my ummah there will be a leader who will pour out wealth without counting. Now, there is little disagreement that that is the Mahdi because we have another hadith describing him in exactly this way. And that's why if you remember we said from the guidelines, you put the narrations together you get a more complete picture.